Hello and welcome to my channel, Maine's Mind. Um, today I am going to be reviewing this book, Dry, by Neil Schusterman and Jared Schusterman. Um, this is a spoiler alert. I am going to talk about things in this book. Um, I'm going to talk about characters. I'm going to give my personal reflection on parts of this book. And um, yeah, so if you haven't read this book yet, go ahead and pause or, you know, X out for a little while, go read it, and then come back. Okay, so this book is based in Southern California, and we know that California was hit with several fires and droughts in the years past, so this book kind of hits home, you know. Uh, I'm not a California girl, I'm a Texas girl, but, you know, the possibility of this happening is kind of scary. So the way the book is written is that we're kind of in the mind of these individual characters. Uh, and it starts with um, California getting this drought and the water deal with these other states that shut down a river, you know, kind of fell through. They, instead of them allowing the water to go through, they shut it down. And so they did what they called it a tap out, um, meaning that, you know, there was no water for the people. Um, and this progressively got worse. This book was, um, the copyright on this book was 2018 and I'm recording this in 2021. So since this book was written, we've had the COVID shutdown. And during that time, they ran out of water. They ran out of toilet paper. You couldn't even go to the store and buy basic supplies because it was shut down. I mean, not shut down, but completely wiped out and human civility kind of disappeared i mean even in my own town there was one case where um a man stabbed another man and his child over water uh, no it was toilet paper over toilet paper um and so the first instance in the book that you really start to see this breakdown in civility is when she's at the grocery store she went to try to get water or list tried to go get water with her uncle and her brother and when they get there the water's gone and she sees one case of water down an aisle that was misplaced. And as she goes to, towards it, this woman, an older woman, an adult, goes and snatches it up. And she's like, we had, saw it first. And she's walking away, knowing full well that the girl needed it too. Um, so that's kind of the first instance where you see, okay, so this is starting to break down. You know, the civil structure is starting to break down. Um, and the first sign of, like, violence or the potential for violence that I've seen in this book was when the man in the grocery store helps her push her cart of ice to the uh, front. And he tells her, she's like, you know, thank you for helping. You know, why don't you take a bag? Because she's still trying to maintain her civility. She's still trying to be a good person. And his smile doesn't fade. And he says, I have an even better idea. He says, why don't you take a bag of ice for yourself and I'll keep the rest. And she's like in shock by this, but it's the first sign that, you know, and it kind of gives you a hint that they're children, they're going to be vulnerable, and these adults are going to take advantage of that vulnerability. So as the story progresses, one of the things I found really interesting are the little snapshots. In our first little snapshot here, we see Lila. She's a news reporter who wants to report on what's really going on. She's stuck behind the counter, and she doesn't think they're getting news out that way. So she jumps in an air, a helicopter and goes out to do an actual news report to catch what's going on and one of the things in this part that kind of got me was you know she's like and and you know all we do she's like and yet all we do is tell people to stay calm and keep watching what are we supposed to tell them go scream bloody murder naked through the streets okay for me that rang true um because we watch the news. When things happen, we watch the news. I mean, during COVID, we got so intent on watching the news that I had to make myself turn it off because I was like, this is stressing me out. You know, I'm, I'm scared to death. I'm just going to pause it. I'm not going to watch it, you know, for whatever reason. But we turn to the news to guide us. And she says right here, you know, this is just getting worse. And we're just telling them to be calm. And he makes a point. What do you want us to tell them? Go run around bloody murder screaming bloody murder they're not going to tell you go run around and go crazy looking for things you know they're telling you keep calm just trust and this book kind of makes you question that trust the next hint that we get that the violence is progressing is during the next snap snapshot where um they're talking about the plant manager 
that one kind of caught my attention because this is a plant manager that's running a plant for electricity and they're still getting water and people have become so desperate that they are attacking this place to get water so that kind of gives you oh, okay this is starting to get bad it's starting to get violent and then we move forward and Alyssa's parents haven't come home they had left to go get water from these um, filtration devices that they had set up at the beaches to get you know filter the ocean water to give people water and they haven't returned and so you kind of get this ominous feeling you're like oh my goodness people are getting desperate and now all of a sudden um they're not home so you start to kind of worry and it kind of like starts to stress you out because you're like oh my gosh um so it's getting worse and these snapshots are kind of showing you that things are getting worse in the next snapshot we meet charity Charity is trying to get to her daughter's house and she is on interstate northbound. Um, this one right here, you know, in times of emergency, people are trying to escape. You know, they're trying to get somewhere safe and she's trying to go somewhere safe, but so many people are trying to get to water. They're trying to escape. They're panicking that the interstate is shut down. Um, and you get this sense of frustration as you're reading this because it's like, I, you know, Anybody who's ever been in traffic knows this feeling. You're like, oh my God, I want to get out of here. Um, I can honestly say I've only been in really bad traffic. You know, anything that I can relate to this one time and it was in Houston, Texas. People in Houston, y'all have some crazy traffic. Um, I was sitting there in traffic one day and it was, you know, we were down there visiting family and I was, I don't know what happened, but we had been stuck in traffic for over an hour and it was like, oh my God, what's going on? So we kind of, you know, went into another lane to leave and and I thought it was so I mean you know it was scary because we were stuck in traffic but it was kind of funny because this old lady nice silver-haired old lady flipped me off and cussed me out and I was like oh my gosh go ahead and let her cut in front of me so you know that was my experience with traffic so but that frustration of being stuck for so long I could relate to this and it was just kind of like ugh so throughout this book, we meet Kelton, and Kelton's another one of the main characters, and he's trying to help Alyssa, a girl he's got a crush on, and her brother, and especially as the parents are gone, he takes kind of a protector role, and he starts trying to take care of her and her brother, and he agrees to go with her to go try to find um, her parents, and in this time, they run into what they call a water zombie, somebody that is so desperate for thirst. He's a young kid as well, older than them, I think, but still young, um, to the point that Alyssa like spits in his face and he's like licking the spit. And he's like, do it again. He's so desperate for water. And uh, Kelton pulls his gun out, but he can't shoot him. He can't bring himself to shoot him. And he ends up losing the gun. And this is where Jackie comes in. Jackie is a tough girl. She's apparently a really smart, genius type girl, but she's kind of like in a rebellious stage where she just doesn't want to do what anybody says. She's against everything. And she gets the gun and puts it to the water zombie's head and kind of makes him back away. Um, so they get this little trio. And at first, she, we're kind of unsure about Jackie. She didn't kill him. So you're like, okay, but she's a tough girl. So we don't know. We don't know if she's going to be a troublemaker or just a troubled kid. And as the story progresses, we get to learn a lot more about Jackie. She's actually turns out to be a really good person. Well, as the story progresses, we get some, and I don't want to ruin it entirely for those who decided to stick with me. Um, but we, we run into where civilization starts to break down and neighbor turns against neighbor. Because of that, the kids are forced to leave and Kelton's parents get stuck behind because of an accident that cost his brother's life. And so in their trip, they run into a guy named Henry. Henry is a weasel. I'm sorry, he's just a weaselly guy. And I kind of got this right away because the, the reader for Henry is Michael Crouch. And I didn't know him. That's who it was at first, but I heard the voice and I heard the way he was talking and how he's kind of all in his head, superiority. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know this speaker. I know this guy. It was from another book. He was, uh, he read for another book. And the character in that book was also a Weasley guy who <laughs> um, had questionable thoughts and morality. And it was just kind of like, as soon as I heard the voice and I heard the way he was reading it, I was like, oh my God, this character is going to be just like that one. And he really was. <laughs> he really turned out to be a really 
big scoundrel all the way through to the end. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, so they meet Henry. Um, and Henry, in self-preservation, decides to tag along with them by tricking them. Kelton is truly an asset to them. I mean, his family were preppers and everything. And yeah, we're always like, oh my gosh, these preppers. But I mean, his family was prepared. <laughs> they were preppers, but they were prepared. They had water, they had food. He had knowledge that these other kids didn't have. So when they approach her uncle, because as the story's progressing, you know, we're introduced to Henry, we're introduced to all these bad things. They're on the run trying to breach this bug out, which is a safe spot for them. Uh, that Kelton's family had built, like in the mountains, that was like a safe spot that was supposed to help sustain them during this time and, you know, in the event of a crisis. So they're trying to get there, but they need a special kind of vehicle, and her uncle has one. So they go to Dove Canyon to try to get this truck from her uncle. When they get there, they find out that the uncle's sick, and his girlfriend's really, really sick. Um, and we see a bit of kindness here from Jackie. Um, but we don't find out that she's like kind until later, right? So anyways, we get here and it's Kelton who realizes, hey, your uncle's sick and whatever he's got is contagious. So he's able to save them because he's got this knowledge. He's like, that's dysentery. I think it's dysentery. And um, they're like, no. And he's like, no, unless he can get some really good antibiotics and water, you know, so supplies, medical supplies, he's not going to make it. Um, and she doesn't want to believe this. But his knowledge is what, saves them in this case because then they're really careful they don't eat anything and they're able to make it out of there this unfortunately is where they meet henry the little weasley guy we talked about earlier um and he pretends like he has a box of aqua viva which is this expensive water and um he doesn't so he ends up being able to go with them on this trip to the bug out so he's a very good negotiator i'll give him that makes you question a lot of things in the snapshot Chinook, we get the perspective from a pilot and she sees thousands of people surrounding, you know, crowded together in an unofficial site. And she realizes that they're there like as if they were there for entertainment, but it's not entertainment. They're clearing uh, a landing pad for her, even though that's not her destination. She has to pass them. And she realizes doing this math in her head, she says, which means nine in 10 people won't get water today. You know, and ju that's just in the official centers. So this wasn't even an official center. This was just people crowding together, praying that somebody was going to come and help them. And the it just gets worse and worse. I mean, it, it this book was heart wrenching. It had me in tears. It had me feeling their pain. It had me thirsty. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to lie. I I was doing dishes and I was like, oh, I need to turn the water off. I need to conserve because the idea that this could happen. I mean. This is a fictional book, but it could happen. It happens all the time. People get into droughts where we have to conserve. We run into crisis like this COVID-19 where we've been in lockdown and supplies were limited. That was a horrible feeling to go to the grocery store and not be able to find what you need. Um, that's nothing like we've ever been in before. However, despite how bad things got, Mr. Schusterman and his son were very good at dropping little bits of hope along the way. Like, in their desperation to get away from these centers that were just loading people up to die, basically, they run into a lady that they call the Water Angel that gives them food and kindness and somewhere to sleep. I mean, and you see this act of kindness in a time that's terrible, and it's like, okay, even though things are bad, there's still some good in the world. So it's a drop of hope in a bad situation. And it's just enough to carry you through to the next crisis. In the next crisis, we see Aly Alyssa. Focusing on Alyssa. At the beginning of the book, Alyssa's very anti-guns, anti-violence. You know, try to maintain your humanity. Be good. Don't hit people. Don't shoot people. And as this book progresses, she starts realizing, hey, I got to take care of myself. I've got to take care of my brother, you know, despite the consequences. You know, I don't want to be this person, but this is who I have to be right now. And she gets to a point in the book where she's being assaulted. Um, she's being attacked. And in that moment, I think something in her shifted um, because Kelton 
Kelton actually pulls the trigger this time and saves her. And I think her perspective kind of changes. Her perspective of people kind of change, changes after that. We see this when she runs into the little old lady in the camper where she basically fights her for a little bit of water so that she could give it to her brother. Um, and even though that's against everything she believes in, she does it so she could save her brother. They eventually get caught up in a fire. They're trying to make it to one of the last reservoirs of water that the firefighters are using to try to shut out these fires um, that are spreading throughout California at this time. And they get caught in this fire. And it's just a lot going on. But that last scene, oh, the heartbreaking scene. That moment where she's like, death by fire is terrible. I'm not going to let my brother die this way. And she has to hold that gun to his head. Oh, I can't even imagine. My heart broke. I was in tears. I want to cry right now just thinking about it because it's such a desperate moment. You know, that's her brother. And that, I mean, I can't even imagine. But again, in that brief moment of desperation and he leaves you hanging and then goes to that last snapshot. And in this snapshot, we have one of these planes that are coming to scoop up water to pour on the fire and this guy goes against his orders because he sees these people and he dumps water on them and he has no idea that he just saved them from more than the fire he saved them from thirst he saved them from the fire he saved them for so many reasons the end of the book gives you hope to return to normalcy even now and with the COVID and everything, this book gives you hope because they are able to return to some normalcy. Not the same, but the new normal, as he calls it. You know, they make it home. Uh, their parents made it through this crisis. Uh, Jackie ends up surviving and Henry, the weaselly guy who abandoned them and sold them out to the guys that tried to assault Alyssa, <laughs> ends up being an eighth grader who pretends that he saved people. He's just a weaselly person. Um, but the book ends on a positive note and it gives you hope. I mean, you might have to adjust to the new normalcy for a while in hopes that things return to normal. But I mean, this book brings out a lot in human nature that seems to have rung true even now. A lot of these people were looking for someone to save them and I mean, at one point in the book, the dad even makes a comment on that. Uh, Kelton's dad makes a comment about this. Towards the beginning of the book, Alyssa gives water to the neighborhood people. It's water bottles that she had stolen from Kelton's house. Um, and instead of sharing it, they started fighting over it. And what ultimately happened is these people stormed Kelton's house, stealing whatever they could, basically. Um, so before that, though, the dad has an interaction with one of the neighbors who comes to him asking him for water. Kelton's dad could give him water, but he doesn't want to because once you start giving, people keep taking. And so he, and he's trying to protect his own family. What happens is he tells him, you know, you've got a marvelous garden of succulents. You could grind those up and squeeze at least a gallon out of them. I could even show you how to make a condenser to extract the water. This man gets angry at him and he tells him, Roger, I'm offering you a gift much more valuable than a bottle of water. Self-reliance. That kind of rings with you because you're like, sheesh, if it's one thing I've learned from this, it's that I need to learn how to garden. I need to learn how to extract water. I need to <laughs> learn a lot of things. Um, this book was very close to reality. I mean, even if it was fiction, it follows human behavior. It follows how people react in a crisis. I mean, it's sad. We all like to think that we would, re we would react better than that. But you never know until you're in that situation. So for this book, I do give it a five out of five. Uh, five stars because it is a really good book. It is a good read. It's going to get you caught up into it emotionally and everything else. It's worth it. Um, if you like what I had to say, if you want to have a discussion about the book, please like and subscribe and please comment below. Let me know if there's any books that you recommend or if you just have thoughts on this book as well. I want to hear from you all. Okay, so I will see you all next week. Goodbye.